we're getting into a deep dive into a student rental in Cleveland, right? So you're looking at the Cleveland housing market, trying to figure out what investment strategy makes the most sense. If you want a little bit of info on what it's going to be like to rent to students, well, you're in the right spot. Let's go. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. Jay Wise here. Today, I'm working with Trisha and her husband, SoCal. SoCal Investor. She's a teacher. He's a firefighter. You guys come to the Cleveland market because their prices are cheaper, right? And thus far, right, we originally met because you sent me some deals to look over for you. And, well, they were ghetto as hell. <laughs> you sent me some of the most ghetto, horrible, horrible houses I've ever seen, right? You were originally targeting properties in probably the worst neighborhood you could possibly target them in. And then you knew that I'm from SoCal, he's from Cleveland, I need his insight because I don't want to make a mistake. I don't know these neighborhoods. Why would you? You're all the way in California, right? Of course you don't know the neighborhoods. That's what I'm here for. And then I talk to you, and you're like, oh, yeah, screw that. I don't want to do that. It's too high risk for me, right? So going into better neighborhoods, more safe stuff, right? So I thought this would be perfect for you, especially because you're a teacher as well, right? You're in the education system. Let's just rent to students. Students are incredibly safe tenants. They are way safer tenants than uh, the kind of tenants you're going to find in the hardcore ghetto, right? Uh, students, just like they have their parents to co-sign, they don't want evictions on their record. If you're in a really blighted neighborhood and there's like felons living there, they're not really too concerned about their future, right? So without further ado, let's break down the numbers and see what a student rental will look like in the Cleveland market right now. Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise. Real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back, folks. Let's pull up this deal, right? College rentals, man. We rent... We're renting houses to the students, right? 147 Seminary Street in Berea, 44017. It's been on the market forever. 248500 is what they're asking for. It's been on the market for like 455 days. They had it priced like uber high, and then they've been dropping price, and then they were under contract. And now it's available again, and it's a badass deal. It's a cool house. I love investing in student rentals. I like the city of Berea, as a matter of fact. Uh, for those of you that watch my show often, uh, you may have heard me talk about my former career. When I was 21, I was managing a Radio Shack. That's when I bought my first house. Well, the Radio Shack that I was managing was actually in Berea, right down the street, okay? Right there. And this is also right down the street from BW, baby, Baldwin Wallace University, okay? Student rental. Love it. But I still don't love that price. 248.5 is too high. We got to come in a little bit less than that. We're close, but not right there. Two twenty-five is what I want you to pay, and then what you get, you get a renovate or a rented student rental. It's already got tenants in there, a bunch of college kids. It's a big old house, and that's what you want, right? We want a big old house, right? Because what what it is with college rentals, folks, you rent it out. You put them all on the lease. You don't, like, do it by the bedroom. It's not like you get six six college kids and you do six leases. No, it's one lease. It's 2300 and then you leave it amongst those kids, and they'll pack six kids, eight kids. I don't know how many they're going to pack in there, but they're going to pack in a crap ton of kids, right? But that's cool. That's how we get, like, $2,300, right, in rent out of a house like this, okay? So six bedrooms means at least six kids, okay? And they're paying twenty three hundred. If Billy Bob doesn't have his rent and they don't have the full twenty three hundred, you don't accept twenty one hundred or nineteen hundred or any of that nature. You say, sorry, kids, you're all getting evicted unless I get my money in full, right? That's how you do that. Keeps uh, problems away. But we shouldn't have any issues. This has uh, been leased by these kids for a while. It's leased all the way through the end of July twenty twenty two. Twenty three hundred a month comes in, twenty seven thousand six hundred goes out. Now, Got the chart, which shows you your fixed and variable expense estimates. Now, when I do these single-family homes, a couple things I changed. Normally, when we do single-family homes, I want you to take a look at the lawn care. 
We normally push that off on the tenant, have the tenant do the lawn care. But uh, we're not going to do that here in this situation. It doesn't really work with the college kids, right? Nobody that's doing a college rental is thinking of this as like their home, right? Quote, unquote, their home, right? It's just a place they're going to live for a couple years, right? So they're not buying lawnmowers and stuff. So we're going to have to do the, the lawn care, right? So you're going to have that $44 average fee. In addition to that, for single families, we're usually seeing a water and sewer bill around 75 bones, right? 75 bones a month. Well, this is a six-bedroom house, and we know damn well we're packing in six, at least six college kids. So I went ahead and doubled that up, too, to give you a more accurate projection of what your numbers should be, right? So the real net profit, in my opinion, the net operating income should be approximately $14,172 uh, a year, right? And if we get it at the price I want to get it for, two and a quarter, you put down 56 and a quarter, the bank would kick in 168 and three quarters, right? And then that is going to come out to be a 10% cash on cash return. And this is just a solid, solid deal, right? Solid 10%. It's not going to get any more sound than this. Baldwin Wallace University ain't going anywhere, right? You're always going to have new tenants every single year. New tenants, new tenants. And the cool thing about college kids, you don't really evict them that often, right? If you start getting into low-income investing, right, evictions become an issue, right? Why are these kids going to college, folks? Baldwin Wallace is like $40,000 a year at least. It might be more, right? I haven't looked at how much college costs since... I was that age, but it's a lot, okay? They're willing and able to pay that much for their future, and they're obviously worried about their future because they're paying that much money, right? So you think these kids want evictions on their record? No. And then oftentimes you can easily get the parents to co-sign, right? So I like college rentals in the respect that you don't actually uh, deal with having to evict people very often, right? Because these people... They care about that black mark on their record. Sometimes in the low-income space, those people don't give a shit, right? <laughs> That's just part of the game. So you, it's a very safe investment. The numbers might not be as sexy as other stuff you see, but it's just safe, it's sound, and it's always going to be there. And because of that, I love this deal. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.